I'm sorry. It's trustees this morning. Amen. Trustees. Amen. May we bow our heads, please. Father God, it is in your name, Lord, that we come to you today just to tell you thank you. Lord, we come to you today to tell you thank you because you gave us one more day. You didn't have to do it, Father, but you did it anyway. So thank you, Lord. Thank you not only for us that are here today, but Lord, we thank you for the ones who are yet on the way. Father God, we thank you for those that are even listening to us live and on stream, Lord God. Jesus, we thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord God, for touching us this morning, Lord God. Thank you for allowing the, rug, the blood to run warm through our veins today. Thank you, Lord God, that you gave us a mindset to give this morning, Lord. To be able to put on our clothes. To be able to come to your church house, Lord God. To be able to worship you and give you all the honor and glory and praise that you so deserve. Lord, we ask that you would bless those because some of us weren't able to get down here today, Father. Lord God, there's some that are still lying in the hospitals, Lord God. Lord, some still have pain afflicting their body, Lord God. Lord, some are lying in their beds, Lord God. Lord, they're just calling out to you because they're asking you to give them a healing today. Lord God, give them one as only you can. Only you can touch. Only you can heal in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you bless those that are homeless today. Be with them, Father God. Lord God, let them know that you are here. All they have to do is call on your precious and holy name. Lord, bless those that are hungry today. Somebody doesn't have enough to eat, Lord God. But Lord, we ask that you will open up places, Lord God. Let people open up their hearts that they will be a blessing to others, Father God. Please be with us all, Lord God. Lord God, we asking that you would be with the citizens of Ukraine today. Lord, bless them, Lord God. Lord God, somebody is calling on you right now and asking that you would give them peace, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would give them peace in the midst of the storm. Lord, let them know that you are the one. You are the one that could calm all fears, Lord God. You are the one that could change minds, Lord God. You're the one that can regulate hearts, Lord God. Lord, you're a mind fixer, Lord God. You're a heart regulator, Jesus. You're a doctor in the middle, in the middle of the hospital room, Lord God. You're a lawyer in the courtroom. Lord, be with him today. Be with our president, Lord God. Be with our vice president, Lord God. Lord, direct them. Show them what to do. Place people around them, Lord God, who will be a blessing to them, Lord God. Give them all the wisdom and knowledge that they stand in the need of. Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless the man of this house. Bless him, Lord God. Continue to keep him with a fresh anointing each and every day. Bless his wife as she stands beside him, Lord God. Give them strength, Lord God. Continue to walk and tone for you each and every day, Lord God. Bless our church family, Lord. Bless each and every one of them. Lord, you know what everyone is going through. We ask that you watch over each and every one of them, Lord God. And bless them as only you can. Now, Lord God, we're just asking that you will bless the word that's going to come forth on today. Somebody, Lord God, has a broken heart today, Jesus. Somebody's finances, Lord God. Lord, they have their backs against the wall. Somebody, Jesus, somebody's spouse or somebody's child didn't come home last night. Lord God, be with them, Lord God. Give them the word today that they are so patiently waiting for, Lord God. Lord, and we just continue to pray that you would bless us all. 
Let our church, let myself, let everyone in here under the sound of your voice, let us be a light unto the world, Lord God. Lord, let us see what we have in us, that they will ask us what it is and where we come from. Lord God, it is these and all other prayers I ask, Lord God, in your mighty and precious Son, his holy name, Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask all these prayers. Amen and amen. Amen. Let us say amen again. Let us say amen one more time. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our trustees. Amen. 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 We know what's going on around the world. And we should be thankful that it's not happening here. God allows sin to happen. But God has a limit on how far sin can go. So don't worry about anything. But in prayer and with thanksgiving and supplications, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Thank you for that very timely scripture. If there's any way we can go when we are in trouble or when we are worried, it is to the word of God. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I do believe that Brother Jackson has a request of couple of minutes to share with us uh, after he has come and shared with us uh, our uh, praise singers will come back again and uh, we'll uh, look forward to the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm giving honor to God, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, our pastor, for allowing me to speak for a few minutes on my, on my niece, Linda. Um, I just want to thank everybody for receiving me and her into the church. And I um, just want you to know that her death was not in vain. She was ready. I wanted to say this. We, me and a couple of my friends were walking around the park, and I said, um, I, want to walk, I want to walk and let people see my light. And one of the guys said, how can he see your light? The guy, well, they can, do you see your light? And so I couldn't answer, and then my wife came to me um, after, my, after my niece died, and she said, um, Linda told her, if my uncle can do it, then I can too. <laughs> and she not only joined the church, she became a school a teacher, she became a, a very positive role model in the church. And when she died, she left me with some comfort. She left me with the feeling that, you know, she was ready for, for, for the Lord to come and get her. I can't say that. I ain't, I ain't telling a lie. I need some more. If you all came today, you got to go, Jack? I said, Lord, can you give me a few more minutes? <laughs> I, ain't, I, can't, I can't say what she said, but she was ready. And I just want everybody to know that her death was not in vain. And I just thank you again for allowing her to be a part of this church and allowing it. Because um, when she said, if my uncle could do it, then I can too. That means, to me, it verified, I don't care where you at. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching what you do and how you do it. Your light do shine. Amen.
you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken,
You may be seated. I think they're going to sing another song. Amen. Father, we come now asking that you would be with us now, be in the midst as we share this message to these, your people. Bless us now, those who may not know you will get to know you after this message. We thank you now for blessing us to know that we need to repent of our sins and be baptized. We thank you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi. We give honor to God, our Father Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit. We give honor to our pastor, Pastor Hall, to Sister Hall, all the officers and members and friends. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 20. I'll be reading from the Good News Translation. The Bible says that you will have life 
with the consequences of everything you say. Verse 21 says, what you say can preserve life or destroy it. So you must accept the consequences of your words. King James Version says of, of the A part of 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Just for a few moments, I want to talk from this topic. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Since we are at the end of yet another Black History Month, I want to take this opportunity to honor a figure who we all at some point in our lives heard say today's topic. And that figure is the black mother. This had nothing to do with what they said out their mouth or how they act. But if something negative or bad came out of your mouth, you would have heard them say, watch your mouth. I know that you all love to be politically correct and use Webster Dictionary, but I went to my first cousin, Google, and I talked to my second cousin, Urban Dictionary, and I found out what this phrase means. It is a verbal warning and boundary is provided when someone takes personal offense to what someone else says. It is meant to urge the people to reconsider what they say. This phrase can be followed up with an or else, but it is usually the final warning before a consequence is given. Whether it's a slap, you get blocked, or something else. We're living in a culture now where we speak first and think later. It does not matter whether you are a politician, a preacher, teacher, student, parent, or a child. Because of social media, it has become a public journal where we speak our minds without any thought of consequences later. There are many of us today who can honestly, who can be honest, that sometimes we allow emotions to type the words to what we say next. There are times that I have allowed, see I can't talk about you, because you might not want to be honest today, but I can honestly say that there are times or some things that I have said that have cut people the wrong way because I spoke first and thought later, and I did it with no remorse. Then on the other end, there are things that I have said to myself that I have found no change in. This is what I mean by it. For example, I would say, I'm just going to be fat. I'm not going to lose no weight. Now, yes, I can quit fast food and I can go to the gym. But because I fed that statement in my heart, I don't have any enthusiasm or no drive to lose weight. Whatever you say is bound to happen to you because you are feeding it to the atmosphere. If you keep saying or posting that you'll, I'll never find the right man, I'll never find the right woman, I'm just going to be single for the rest of my life, guess what? You're going to be single. If you keep saying or posting I'm broke, I will never be able to afford anything, guess what? You're going to remain broke. If you keep saying or posting, I'm depressed, nobody loves me, I might as well not be here anymore. Guess what? Suicide is around the corner for you. But I came through 2nd Arnold in the name of Jesus to speak against the spirit of suicide in this atmosphere. <laughs> through the name of Jesus, I speak against the spirit of doubt in this atmosphere. Through the name of Jesus, I speak against the spirit of worthlessness in this atmosphere. I came to speak life today. I can recall countless times that Jesus spoke life. He cast out demons 
but he still spoke life. He rebuked strongholds, but he still spoke life. He preached and taught against what the Pharisees were doing by their law, but he still spoke life. Why? You may not want to believe it. It is so. I came to speak life today. Now we have to be careful because life will make it easy for us to speak against it. But we can speak life by speaking Jesus. For he says in his word in John 10 and 10 that I come that you might have life and not just regular life, but have life more abundantly. I'm I'm not saying for you not to admit your depression. I'm not saying for you not to admit that you're having a bad day. I'm not saying for you not to admit that you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm saying that you need to change the narrative that comes out of your mouth. I challenge you to speak life over death. Speak peace over chaos. Speak prosperity over broken. Speak healing over sickness. Speak positivity over negativity. Currently, currently my family is on the train with everybody else watching the drama reboot of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air called Simply Bel-Air. Now in this show, there are many issues that come up. And for those that haven't seen it, this is a spoiler alert, but you'll be all right. One that sticks out to me, one issue that sticks out to me is when the character Will goes into the locker room to meet up with his cousin Carlton to meet the crew. Now, the crew, along with Carlton, with Carlton being the only African-American, they're singing a song by Bobby Shimmerda. And when Will walks in, he immediately says, watch your mouth. They could not say the N-word. They were freely saying it. He could not understand why Carlton would allow them to say it. Carlton goes on to tell him that it's just a word. Will concludes by saying, them boys ain't with the culture, so they can't say it. Now, that's a debate for another day. But can I suggest that in our culture, I'm talking about the Jesus culture, that we shouldn't be saying stuff, certain words, certain phrases, we shouldn't be saying. We call ourselves Christians. But we show, it, don't, it sure don't feel like it with some of these things that come out of our mouths. One, one, one thing I know that I shouldn't be using the contraction can't. I believe that if we say or do, or if what we say or do is opposing to the Bible, then we're not true followers of Christ. So by me saying I can't, I'm opposing the Bible. Because Philippians 4 and 13 says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that means that I shouldn't be saying can't. I can't do this. I can't do that. You're going against the Bible. But the Bible tells that I can do all things. It's time for us to change our talk. Because we are speaking things into the atmosphere that simply attack our lives. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, my mother continues to teach me even today. Each and every time that uh, my mother got sick, and my Aunt Diane can tell you, my sister can tell you, we know when something ain't right with her. But you'll never hear her say it. We always ask her how is she feeling and her response is almost always some of you know it oh I'm blessed to the Lord I'm doing wonderful thanks for asking how you doing it's never my leg is killing me or I got a headache out of this world even though she may not feel it, be feeling her best she wasn't going to tell the atmosphere or better yet the enemy what she was going through 
Because as soon as the devil hears what you're going through, what you're complaining, he, when he hears your problems, when you badmouth your life or someone else's, he gets excited because now he has something to stir up because it's now in the atmosphere. Be careful what you say. Oh, I'm sick today. You're going to be sick. You're going to be sick. But by his stripes, I'm healed. If you start speaking positivity into your life, God will make a way for you. When we had the summer camp here at the church, we always told the staff never to call the children bad because you were speaking that on their life. I, I, I know that this might hurt some of your feelings, but that's okay. Stop speaking failure on this current generation. They are not bad. They are not lazy. Even though it may, not, it may seem like that from their actions. But don't speak that into the atmosphere. We need to pray for and with them and continue to teach them. They are not murderers and thieves and drug users. They are not lost. James 3 and 9 says that with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and curses. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. So I came here today to speak doctors and lawyers and, and teachers and preachers and entrepreneurs into the atmosphere. I just preached a message dealing with the Israelites complaining. If you didn't know that complaining was a sin, it's a sin. But complaining when they got to the Red Sea and the Egyptians were behind them, all they saw was death. And they told Moses, he should have left them in Egypt to die. They were speaking it into the atmosphere. Young people, I came to let you know that it's time to change your narrative. Stop speaking depression over your life. Stop speaking losing and failure over your life. Stop looking at a failing future. But watch God work in this generation. Watch God do a mighty shift with this generation. God is getting ready to blow our minds. We just got to wait and see. Something I want you to see really quick. I saw this description. And I thought it was quite interesting. And I want you to see this. It's two pages. Now the reason why I'm about to mess with this is because I didn't pay for it. So I'm about to waste some toothpaste for those of you that know I didn't pay for it, so I can do it. Listen, every time I squeeze the toothpaste out, there is no way that this toothpaste can get back in this tube. Even I can try it, I can get a, a spoon or something and try to dip it in, it's going to be difficult. It won't happen. Because I keep squeezing it out. It's easy to come out. But it's hard to go back in. Whatever you say out of your mouth. It's easy to come out. But it's hard to come back in. It's hard to, so when you curse somebody. It's easy to go out. But that curse is still on them. Because it can't come back to you. I need you to understand this. That. Did you see what I did with the toothpaste? In order for it to come out, it's not going to come out unless I apply pressure to it. There's some things that we say under pressure because of how we feel. It don't feel good to me, so you say something bad to me, I'm going to automatically apply pressure and say something bad to you. But if we learn how to control our pressure, some of y'all got high blood pressure because of what people said to you, because of what people did to you. But if you learn how to 
deal with your pressure. And don't allow bad to come out of your mouth. We've got to learn to allow good to come out. Speak positivity over negativity. I want you to leave you with this. That uh, Donald Lawrence said this. That we're living in a time where everybody's struggling for their lives. They're stressed and they're depressed. But watch this. I speak life. You're going to live. Somebody here came depressed. Somebody here came not knowing where their next paycheck, was, whether their next paycheck was going to pay the bills that's coming up. I came to let you know that you're going to live. You are the head and not the tail. You will prevail. I speak life. Watch this. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. And how do I know this? I know this because Jesus went to the cross for our lives. God cared enough about us to send his only son. Why are we taking the cross for granted? There are some of us that said, I think I saw this too. Somebody said, well, he died, so I might as well sin. Because he died for it. We are taking for granted what Jesus did. Don't just actively sin. We should be living to be like Christ. So we've got to learn how to be like him. Jesus took the beating for your pain and for your hurt. So I came to let you know the cry, your last tear. Because it's going to be all right. I need to let you know to stand up and speak life. Stand up and speak life. Stand up and speak life. Whatever you're going through, just stand up and speak life. Whatever pain you're dealing with, just stand up and speak life. Whatever disappointment you're going through, just stand up and speak life. What, whatever situation you might be dealing with, just stand up and speak life. Things may be dead on this side, but just stand up and speak life. I know it feels rough and hard, but just stand up and speak life. I know it feels like no, there's no return, but just stand up and speak life. I know you're feeling discouraged, but just stand up and speak life. Whatever you're going through, just stand up and speak life. Speak positivity into this atmosphere. Don't let the negativity overpower you. The next time you get sick, I dare you to just say, by his stripes, I'm healed. The next time you're dealing with a situation, say, no, no, not today, devil. You won't get me today. Devil, I've decided to follow Jesus, and that's enough. There's a song that the voice of the enemy used to sing. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. Come on, let's say it. Hey, so long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Say goodbye. Goodbye to my pain So long Come on, speak life today So long, so long Bye-bye Say bye-bye to your troubles So long, bye-bye Say goodbye To my pain and my So long One more time So long, so long Bye so long, bye bye. Say goodbye, goodbye to my pain and my so long. The doors of the church are open. Let us stand. If there be one, maybe you don't know how to speak life. Jesus is the answer. Please don't let this moment pass you by. Come to Christ. Let him help you with your pain. Let him help you with your sorrow. Let him help you with your troubles. Just come to him. Just come to him.
Jesus is the one, the only one who can help you. So come today. So long, bye-bye. All over the building, so long, bye. Say goodbye, goodbye to my pain. So long. One more time. Hey, so long.